Hello everyone, my name is Bradley. I have a Brad Taste in Music, and today I have been sent in the entirety of The Crow and... No, The Mockingbird and The Crow. It's it's specifically in that order because I believe it's a two-part album experience. Very em heavy emphasis on the experience. Static and Angel say, Someone wrote Quit on a Napkin because everybody had a song called Rockstar, but guess what? This ain't no radio song. It's a great message. They've been uh, plotting to basically send this in for a very long time, and now is the time this was an album that i actually listened to with some friends about like at least a year ago i think Th this album is basically exemplary of everything wrong with modern country music uh there's multiple just straight up product placements for stuff like walmart and stuff and um yeah he basically has like two topics in his brain at all times which those being like being a red being like a redneck and just drinking Jack Daniels until you're basically comatose. It, it's basically the death of country in an album, pretty much. Not to mention this album there. is uh, indeed an hour long, 17 songs. Uh, it's, it's a two, it, it's a, it's not a quick listen. Yeah. You really got to invest time into this. It's, I mean, it is a two parter, so I guess it makes sense, but yeah, it, it is, it is quite, quite a journey to say the least. <laughs> For my own personal journey with Hardy, I've only really heard a couple of songs. My first exposure, and really my only exposure being radio song, being sent in many Classic. times, uh, to the point of Classic. where now it is a uh, soundbite. It's a radio classic, song? yeah, for sure. Radio song. Radio song is hilariously bad, and uh, apparently, from what I've heard, the rest of this album isn't um, hilariously bad. And yet, at the same time, despite the fact that the cue has been the most painful Almost six and a half hours of my life, Angel and Static were like, you know what? Now is the time. Okay, we make, how now can we is make the this time. day even better for you? <laughs> yeah, so uh, with that being said, we get to listen to an entire Hardy album. Uh, uh, before we do that, um, Angel, do you have anything you want to add to this as well or no? I just want to say, the way I go about listening to albums, I always think about, like, do I enjoy this? Is it, like, did, like by the end of it, did I have a great time listening to this album? And, like, I, I did this initially through, like, a not good deep dive with uh, Fantano. Like, all the albums he did is not good. So I, um, when I got to this album in particular, there was something almost cathartic in a way where, like, having someone who, like, unknowingly commits all of the heinous cliches in country music and then like putting it into music like this in a way that it seems almost like it's like second nature like you don't even notice you're doing it and then like having this all on an album with an incredible second half that is beyond description i think this is one of the most entertaining projects of last year and i i'm so happy i found this thing <laughs> Well, I've been actually, I've had many people over the, like, last year asking me to listen to this, and I'm actually very happy that I'm doing it now because of the exact reasons that you describe. I'm hoping for something entertaining. Uh, maybe we could laugh, maybe we could cry together, um, but, you know, regardless, we're here to experience it. First song, Beer. Let's go. To the flag. Beer except Bud Light, exactly. Stay Tonight we met, man, we've been thick as thieves It was you and me Every Friday night from Hank to Blink 182 Picking me up, setting me down All the crazy things we've been through In this dry old Sunday town All the trouble I got you into It's a wonder you kept me around me Sincerely be Oh, it's a song from the perspective of beer. I see. So I had this idea for yeah, a song from the perspective of this every, Check every, this out. Every redneck's best friend, man. Beer, Jack Daniels, Bud Light, all that. This is, this is a song you play to crack a cold one with the boys. Wow. <laughs> Love that little guitar solo. <laughs> You know what? The lyrics are corny as hell, but they're not awful. Like, for what it's going for, it works. It's a shame it just sounds like that. Yeah, I was going to make a mention that, like, I think that the problem is what Hardy is doing here 
is following one of the most generic blueprints ever um, and making it just goofy enough to where I'm like, hold on a second, wait, this blueprint does kind of suck, you know? It's like all of a sudden, it's like you, you step out of line just enough to make a song about from the perspective of beer, and I'm like, wait a minute, no, this, this, this blows. This sucks. It was a fucking headache. Oh, okay. So this song in particular, like he's gonna, this is like one of the main tropes of this album because like this isn't the first time you're gonna hear him like speaking in the perspective of like something like beer. But so I... I, I I don't know something about the way he delivers his lines and everything like just sincerely bare and the just the accent of it I don't know why it always manages to put a smile on my face it's just something goofy and it's corny enough to where like it, it's I think it's entertaining <laughs> yeah I, I I I get what you're saying it's like I actively hate this song but also at the same time it's like for somebody who's basically yeah you know following things by the book by the formula. Uh, I feel like Hardy at least makes a fool of himself enough for me to say that, yes, I think it's bad. I think it's a red headphones, but I was mildly entertained Dog. through that frustration. Next song has Morgan Wallen on it. That's all I know. Uh, it's called <laughs> Red. Let's go. To the flag. Let's do this. Red. Red. I'm talking about the sun coming up and the sun going down on a John Deere turning up a hard work check. And the dust and the rust, the trucks are half covered in red. Like a bone hound. You literally can barely tell when Hardy ends and Morgan Wallen starts. <laughs> I'm, I'm struggling to really identify between the two. They're basically clone copies of each other pretty much. And funny enough, Hardy started by writing songs like with people like Morgan Wallen and Florida Georgia Line. So like even like I heard a song where Hardy was on a Florida Georgia Line song. I I could not differentiate him between the main the main singer. It it, it was impossible. They're multiplying is what it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're like amoebas. Yeah, yeah. Point, point. They're splitting point, off. Point. They're making point, their point. own point. careers. Every shift off so that was born to fight. He loves a real, a real suburb. Loves America, loves small towns. Fire like a bank account when you bought them tires that lit. Get down a dirt road and got some It doesn't feel like he relates to any of the words he's saying, like in the slightest. It, isn't this guy like not a country guy, like a country boy in general? Like is he like did he Hardy or Wallen? Hardy. I, wait, this uh, is wait, is this Hardy or is it Wallen singing? Oh that that was Wallen. Wait, I think now, just now. <laughs> I think so. Hold on, replay lasts like ten seconds. Yeah, Hold what? Like back yeah, that's Wallen. That's Wallen. That, that is. Yeah, that's Wallen. That's a hundred percent Wallen. Yeah. And then that's Hardy right there. That's I ain't talking politics. I'm talking small town. Are they harmonizing together or is that a vocal effect? <laughs> it, it's all, I would say it's up to listener interpretation, you know? You can you can decipher it any which way you can you want to. Yeah, that's that's deep though. It's like multiple interpretations, you know. That's, I feel like that's very yeah. intentional here, you know. Cause at the end of the day, hey, we all believe I ain't talking politics. Yeah, at this point, radio song can't come fast enough. Is uh, I'm starting to miss, starting to miss radio song a lot at this point in the album. You know. Ugh. Can, can I be? Oh, can yeah, I be complete, Can I be completely honest with with the uh, the song? Yeah. In terms of like objective, like good and bad songs, this song is probably one of the better songs on the album like it, it's it's definitely one of the more inoffensive out of like the ones like on like especially on the first half no i completely um, get where you're coming from like i actually like in terms i feel like of execution and i feel like the writing there is like a sense there of like understanding with what they are doing um for me personally like even though i can see your point 
I just can't look past the fact that I literally think it's the funniest thing that I cannot tell the fucking difference between Hardy and Morgan Wallen. And that is all I will remember from this song. No, yeah, it, no, yeah. It's not good. I never said it was. I'm just saying it's probably one of the better songs on the album. Like, no, and I, I, and I agree. Uh, but for me, I'm going to give it a one and a soul steal. Goodbye. <laughs> <sighs> Next song, Wait in the Truck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this was on the top year end top 40 for last year, wasn't it? This was, it was definitely at least in the top 100, yeah. Oh. If anything, I think Red was like the most, like, it's the most whatever compared to any other song, even on the first half. This is seen as the best song on the album. I, yeah, yeah, according to Album of the Year. A middle of June, midnight thunderstorm. We the best shoes in the headlights. They stop me on a dime by the end, and then she collides. DJ Khaled! DJ Khaled! From head to toe with a tear in her bloodstained shirt. I didn't load her down with questions. I don't know if he's an angel. Cause angels don't do what he did. He was hell bent to find a man behind all the whiskey scars I hid. To that 12 he was reaching. Yeah, yeah, I'll say I actually like the chorus on this one. And I think overall the sound is okay. I, I definitely am zoning out entirely while it's the verses, but... The chorus kind of is nice. The production's okay on this one. You know, it's uh, it's one of the more listenable, I guess. You know? Yeah. This is definitely the biggest song on the album for a reason, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's probably the most, like, I guess, acceptable songs on the album compared to, like, some of the songs we'll get to later on in the album, so. I didn't even try to run. I just sat on the board. Smoking one of his cigarettes and waited for the cops to come. I don't know. It. Hold on. Uh, this song is about Hardy finding a woman who's a victim of abuse and then going to kill her abuser. Oh, how heroic. Oh, what a sweet guy. I know. But don't, don't, I like the, don't the backing vocals also help communicate that? How, how cool he is? I'm just waiting on the truck. Whoa, 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 hey Brad, are you having a good Mr. 305 day? Wait, it is. Holy shit, guys. Everybody oh, see it's, the, it's Mr. 305 day. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Warwick. Yeah, I, I, you know what time it is. You know what time it is. I said, hey. it's, it's time to take a shot, you guys. Dale. Anyway, sorry. Back to, back to this song. Brighter side of the girl I picked up that night. All right, here's my opinion. I think this is the best song so far, and I'd even go as far as to say I'd give it a 5 out of 10. Yeah, yeah. I'm serious yeah. about yeah. that, too. Here's the thing. Um, I actually think that there is something somewhat charming about this Bonnie and Clyde-esque song, even if it is kind of tacky uh, in what it's trying to do. I actually do think that, you know, the, the sentiment is there. Sure, it's very rough, and I think the getting the or waiting the truck hook is terrible. But I don't actually hate this song. I, I actually would say, yeah, I'm I'm pretty much feeling like there's as much good as there is bad. Um, you know, uh, I I actually found this to be relatively listenable. I do, I do really like the message behind the song as well. It, what it, kill it, it, kill so the, go out and kill I mean, people? I mean, well, yeah. I, I mean, uh, well, <laughs> yeah. You're not well, wrong about that. Hardy, please don't leave me in the truck without rolling the windows down and leaving my favorite music on. Yeah. Austin's changing their score because I didn't realize Brad liked it when I gave it a one. Ah. I Drink one for me. To the flag. I hope that you hear this when you're fishing off the pier. Drink one for me. Dude, wait until the bridge. It gets, it gets better. It gets, bro, how, how? This, oh my God, this is ass central. Oh my God. He's asking you to drink one for him, man, because he, he can't be there with the boys at the pub.
Holy shit, dude. The the sound of this song is just so ass, too. Like, this one specifically sounds significantly worse than the previous. Oh, my God. All right, hit and play. He can't be there because he's doing 30 to life for murder. It's a it's a concept album. Exactly. Yeah. 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 They don't got beer and San Quentin. <laughs> you know, you guys make these jokes, but in all reality, this is a sequel to one of the songs from his previous album. Then then what? It's a previous album? <laughs> yeah. It's from 2020. It's, it's called A Rock. <laughs> this album cover is, is horrible. <laughs> Makes this new one look like a fucking masterpiece. Holy shit! Genre bro, I love bro country is the only genre. <laughs> I love the I love the shade of green that they picked for that cover art. Okay, hold on a second here. I guess God forgave me for every one too many buzz. So wait, he drank himself to death and now he's telling other people to drink one for him? Yeah. Even if it puts him over the edge, yeah. Yeah. Cause I didn't know that last beer was the last beer of my life. He said that. Bro, like only a topic. couple years <laughs> just keep telling them to drink it'll only be a couple more years you know drink one for me. oh my god drink one for me. nickelback chords too joey moy who produced a handful of nickelback records did pr help produce this album oh my god well then there you go that explains why immediately i just thought of photograph like instantly i didn't even, I didn't even know that what the hell <laughs> oh wow yeah, he's really he's really pulling from the top of the shelf with these with these people he's working with right now, you know? It makes the second half make a lot more sense. Yeah, so drink one for me uh is basically everything I wanted from this album. Um <laughs> they don't have beer in heaven, I'm not going that's messed up. I'm sorry, Tina. Here's the thing. Um, this song is so unbelievably tone deaf and ridiculous that I can't help but say I actually thoroughly enjoyed that. I'm going to give it a shrug. Yeah, here's the thing. Is I'm done, you know, listen, if I'm getting an entertaining experience from something, sure, I could slap this with a zero. That's what I did on that month of the year. I, put, I slapped a hefty zero on it. But don't get me wrong, it's still a shrug. Because I'm entertained. Like, I think that this song is an absolute disaster, but one of those that's interesting and worth studying. A studyable disaster. Now that is my kind of shit. When it comes to Hardy and numerical scores, just do not apply. I mean, it's literally a song like that is like asking people to drink themselves to death. It's amazing. Like it's 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 like not even trying to hide it either. It's it's wow. This album has so many. It, it has so many layers, but yet at the same time, you could listen to every single song and understand what they mean by first listen. Like, yeah. <laughs> I in country. He puts the, the I in country, you guys. You joke about that, but wait. You, see. Yeah, you joke about he it. He actually says that. He puts the I in country, dude. That's, no, no, no. It's a, it's a, little, it's a little different. There's no it's, it's a little, way, it's, a little, it's, somehow, it's somehow worse than that. That's okay, all, all right. I'll, let's, let's let him explain here. What's the point of four? If you got it all to yourself. All right, I just gotta say, this dude's got such a horrible singing voice. It's actually <laughs> so bad. It's like, it's like it's like Morgan Wallen's honks, but like amped up to like eleven throughout his entire singing. Yeah, it sounds like Morgan Wallen's alcoholic uncle is like taking the <laughs> mic. You know, He's Morgan Wallen. What's <laughs> 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 singing along? There ain't no I in country, but there's a Y O U. <laughs> ah, man, I love this guy. Fucking love <laughs> Harley, dude. Like, it's so tacky, but even then, I actually think it's kind of charming. It's like so stupid that it's like, <laughs> you know, you can't help it, but laugh a little. It is. Genuinely, exactly. genuinely, that. Genuinely, that's some shit I would write, like, unironically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, like, just, just dumb 
face just saying that to you. You can't picture anything else. Exactly. It's just... <laughs> and he's staring right at you on this album cover, too. You you get both sides of him just looking right at you. You know, they got saw... the good old country boy and the mean bad boy, you know? I, I saw a comment on um, on the album of the year uh, comment page for this album that said that the cover up was giving like some I can be your angel and your devil vibes. <laughs> exactly. I learned no matter what I do. There ain't no I in country. But there's a war on you. If I come back home and swing alone on my liver. Damn it, I was in a good mood after, you know, gassing you guys up, and I forgot that I was supposed to be hating this music, and now I'm vibing and enjoying it. God damn yes. it. Yes. No, yes. No, 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 guys, yes. no, no. Welcome yes. to the cold, guys, Brad. No, this, this is a mistake. It's clearly an accident. There's no soft and hearty, but there is a hard. Wow, that's true. There is a that's hard. hard. I mean, you know, but there is also a why in hardy, lest we forget. Why? Exactly. Yeah. Why? Hardy yeah. B. Uh, all right, I'd be lying to you guys if I said I hate that song, so I'm giving it a shrug. Yeah, like I uh, think it's like it's easily like one of the most charming songs too. Like, oh my gosh, bro, bro is serenading you the best way he knows how to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> through through tackiness. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it was cheesy fun. That's what I'm saying. Is like if you're able to, you know, accept that Hardy is. Hardy, then all of a sudden, you know, you're like, hey, you know, I, I, can, I want him to succeed. I want him to win, you know? You know, like, actually, I like that song so much. That tacky-ass line is great. That's what I'm saying, though, you know? I would be lying if I told you I didn't hate that song. That's fair. That should, that you know, that we're not going <laughs> to argue with you on that. All right, Brad, before this next song starts, I want you to take a wild guess what you think that song title insinuates. It's, right, a, so it's, a, it's an ambiguous song. Yes. All right. So the title is called "Screen." I um, allegiance to the flag. A screen door on his patio door, or it could be a screen, as in like you know he wants to be on the television screen and be a rock star. That's those are my two guesses. So that's <laughs> what I'm going in wondering. So. Oh, pretty, pretty damn close. <laughs> oh shit! Really? I got it. Oh, oh, uh, pretty close. Yeah. You know, all these songs do kind of start off just like. Radio song. Someone somewhere mm -hmm. bought a brand new rifle. Pointed at a man holding a Bible. Wait, oh, this yeah, is this just one. Am I the only one willing to bleed? Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it has God. that kind of message to it. <laughs> oh Christ. Ain't fixed on a good for nothing cell phone screen. I wanna drive on Yeah, I thought Screen was especially terrible, um, where it's getting hard to defend it even ironically. But yeah, damn right I'm still defending it ironically. But that one's the red headphones, fuck that shit. Dog. <laughs> yeah, no. it's, honestly, it's probably... Honestly, it's probably the funny one of the funnier songs on the album, at least for this like first half. I mean, it's funny how bad and pathetic it is. It, genuinely, it is funny, um, but you know, it still is very pathetic. <laughs> it covers such a tired and drawn out subject matter, like 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 when talking about like cell phone screens and like how it's taken like people's like I don't think it's a bad thing to cover, but like the subject itself is just so tiring it's been done i'll be honest i had no idea that's what this song was about until you just said it and i'm like oh like genuinely it's like, it's like one of the aspects of it, i believe but like that's like one of the main takeaways i see from it because like he mentions like oh, i'm staring at like a uh a home run screen or like a cell phone screen i saw it on my tv screen like angel oh, i'm gonna be real the only the only thing i remember from this song is the baseball gang dusty at the walmart line that's the yeah only that's thing probably all i'll remember <laughs> too yeah honestly it's unforgettable. It's 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 iconic at this point. 
that was that's lightning in the bottle there you, you don't strike that twice all right next song is called uh happy oh boy fun fact about this song this is the first like this is the song that like party himself wrote all by himself oh shit okay let's see what he's ha what he has to offer Cause I'm just a white man And I'm uh, from a good child <laughs> land Trying to <laughs> understand what it's like now well, happy don't live with who's right or wrong So I had this idea of Happy don't like alcohol Hey happy why can't everybody just be the mix of emotions on your face right now, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's happy right now. Well, happy yeah. sits there, don't like you. Don't like <laughs> I'm sorry, this comment. Just straight up, Jesus Christ, what what the F is this crap? <laughs> it's just that kills me. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the most honest and simple comments are the best ones, you know? Oh. Hey, at least you... At least he's honest about it, yeah. Someone had to say it. <laughs> yeah, this to me is just the most boring, sappy anthem, but also the existence of it is pretty funny. Just the fact that it's this, we need to make a change or be happy kind of bullshit. It's just like, hell no. It's basically, it's basically the country equivalent of like Happy by Pharrell, pretty much. Except <laughs> somehow worse. Because at least Happy by Pharrell is like a jam. But that ain't up to him. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll give Hardy one thing. This song did make me happy. I feel very happy to be clicking this zero button. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. It's Dude, a song he, I feel like doesn't deserve any other score. He's like the Holy newest shit. upcoming independent songwriter. Oh my god. I'm I got nothing else. Let's just hear the last song on this half. Here lies country music. I, I like how he has a song called Here Lies Country Music. And as you'll see, it's a song that's basically like, like sort of saying that country music is dead, is like a dead genre because of quote unquote, a broken heart. Meanwhile, people like him are the exact reason why, why no one takes country music seriously anymore is because it's literally just turned into a joke to sell beer and trucks and shit. I feel like I feel like it gets even worse when like how poor that age. Like, if you just want to talk in the most like objective way possible, country music had the biggest resurgence it's had in years in 2023. The same year this came out, not even yeah, like, like a like, month <laughs> later, Morgan Wallen would hit number one at Billboard, and you'd hear it everywhere. Well, here lies country music. Had a damn good run. It took its last Nashville lap around the ring of fire song. Jack Daniels in the front row. Right next to steel guitar. There he is. <laughs> there it is. Oh, you, oh you my love God, the bro. It's not fucking product placement in a song about how country is dead. He's pissing <laughs> on the flame. He's pissing on the grave. <laughs> He's pissing on Johnny Cash, dude. Like the ring, of, the, 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 the ring of fire, like... son. But it stayed strong with always on my mind and family. Johnny Cash, you. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Cash grab. That too is really good. All right. No, that's a good. That's a good one. Dude. I like this comment someone made. I will say this and I'll say it again. Folk is a much better element in country music than pop. Since when it's pop, it always sounds the same. While with folk, it's pretty much more, it's pretty more unique in a different way. I 100% agree with that, actually. I didn't even see that because I'm literally just dying at these fucking Johnny Cash <laughs> no, yeah, app. I, no, yeah, Johnny Bitcoin, <laughs> Johnny Bankrupt, like I'm losing it. <laughs> the entire chat is just like Johnny Cash jokes. And I, and I just saw like, like a legitimately amazing comment, yeah. Music does, <laughs> <but you laughs> <can't> <laughs> that 
don't know why would Johnny debit or credit just <laughs> oh, shoot, it's the most like because that's like the most Walmart like yeah <laughs> <laughs> Johnny 401k. <laughs> 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 Holy shit. <laughs> this album has become a try not to laugh challenge. <laughs> it's not even the album at this point. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, yeah, that song was a flaming bag of horse shit. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Like, well, I mean, hold on, Brad. Before you give a zero, it's it was all a dream. The first two verses, they were all a dream. Oh, it is. Apparently, <laughs> I don't see any reference to it being a dream. Oh, wait, no, no, I his, woke uh, up in a cold sweat. No, because then. The dream was all made up, and I pray, oh, that I don't leave the world before this country does. Uh, or that before country does, yeah. I see, but then, yeah. But then he decides to say the exact same chorus, no changes. Yeah, I was too distracted that. by the chat, you know what I mean? I just was like... Yeah, I'm gonna be real. I don't think I processed a single second of the second half of the song. I was just looking at chat, just looking at all the Johnny Cash jokes. <laughs> Next song, he, uh, The Mockingbird and The Crow. This is the transitional moment, I assume. It's five this minutes. Is where the, definitely yeah. where the, uh, Dude. It's, it's where the album, I think, sort of takes its conceptual like aspect a bit more literal in, in the sense that the song sort of transitions from this like sappy-ass country schlock to like like southern rock almost kind of some a friend of mine pointed out that the c that they used for the crow and the gothic font is is not actually a c it's actually a t oh, yeah. if you look at the if you look at the t and the and then the c and crow they are literally the exact same character oh no i can't unsee tro now <laughs> so the canonical title for this album is the Mockingbird and the Trow. <laughs> oh my god, you're right. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm a Mockingbird Singing songs that sound like other songs you've heard Well, that's not a Mockingbird, that's a parrot. Just copying other motherfuckers. I've always been a Mockingbird But now I'm a Mockingbird with a microphone At least he's self-aware. I think I just shit my pants. Hey, bro, I just throw that camera. What? The, the Brokeback Benjamin. Yeah, Brokeback Benjamin, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? You're not wrong. Wait, moon shine down? Wait, oh yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty clever, I actually. I picked that one up. I was like, wait, what is that? And that did hit me. Oh my um. god. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> Imagine wagons. <laughs> <laughs> God smack Daniels. Oh my God! I can't. I can't. Wait, Lincoln, Lincoln, <laughs> right? Like, wait, Lincoln Playground. <laughs> Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln Trailer Park. There's so many. <laughs> Farm out, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Mockingbird and the Crow is actually, I'll say, like, in terms of transitioning the album, it's successful. I think it does a good job at it. I just think the song sucks. You know? Oh. Dog. <laughs> it's still very painful, but it's still painfully entertaining, so I'll take it. How th this song literally just openly says, oh yeah, guys, trust me, the first half of the album was supposed to sound like garbage. Get ready for the real content. <laughs> I was gonna say, it's like the scaled and icy of country albums right there. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 first half, you know, was was supposed to be bad on purpose. Now get ready for the real main course. <laughs> oh, the next song sold out. Can I give an interesting piece of trivia about Sold Out? So, uh, one of Hardy's most infamous performances was this song, and that was because he did it for the WWE, and apparently the the broadcast for it was so bad, the WWE had to, uh, like, state an official apology for, for how badly the performance went. <laughs> I heard about that. I haven't seen it, but I have heard about that. I didn't know it was this upcoming song. Uh, I, apparently, it's because the mixing live, like on t on televisions, was like terrible or something. But like any yeah, recording the, I could find was actually, it was, it was okay. I actually, I actually watched it live. The feedback on it was crazy. Like actually. But you just did. Yeah. Okay. That's literally what the first half of the album is. Yeah. You selling out. I was going to talk about it after the song ended, but this is such a contradiction. <laughs> what the fuck? It still ain't sold out. Oh my god. Yeah. Limp this quick is crazy, dude. <laughs> oh my god. Fire. <sighs> that song really sucked ass. It was fire. Dog. Can I can I say something that's gonna absolutely terrify you? Yeah. This is the best song on this half of the album. Not even joking. Are you serious? I'm yes. being I'm being dead serious. This is legit the peak of this second half of the album. It only goes downhill from here. Oh wait, hold on. He he did like the. I sent him the closing track. I think he, you know, assuming he's still like, if he'll probably still like it. Well, well, you know, things can change with context. You know, let's see. What that is true. Do. That is true. Yeah, we'll we'll see. Song is called Jack. Take a wild Jack guess what this one's Jack about. Jack Daniels. <laughs> Bingo. Yeah, we did it. Is this not the same song concept as the opening track? That's what I was thinking. Like, has he already made a song in the perspective of alcohol? It's the second one! <laughs> yeah. Well, well, it's different because it's rock. It's, it's in, different. In, in defense of this album, it actually is different. It's supposed to mirror the song Beer, where beer is this friendly drink that you have with your buddies. Uh, well, all of a sudden, Jack Daniels is the hard stuff. The stuff that really gets you fucked up when you're feeling bad. It's it's the devil. Um, th they're both bad. They're both alcohol. Jack. <laughs> yeah, that was great. That's the hearty I've been waiting for. You know what I mean? Now, this is some oh. radio song. Classic shit right here. I'm gonna <laughs> give that a the last one. Beautiful the, the last one. The last ones. They were most definitely radio songs, but this song, this shit ain't no radio song. That was great. Oh my gosh. Wonderful song. Next song is called Truck I Dead. It's apparently a very big song. To the flag. It's still in the top 100, like on Billboard as we speak. It's still there. I woke up on the wrong side of the truck bed this morning As I woke up on the wrong side of the truck bed this morning I woke up on the wrong side of the truck bed this morning Yeah, you said that this was supposed to be what, like the dark side of this album? Like... Well, that's what it's intended to be. This yeah. is the catchy- bro, it's got trap drums in this shit, man. Yeah, he said he's it, it, not it, a sellout. This is the most Morgan Wallen sounding ass crap ever. It, it literally sounds like a darker version of You Proof. It, it sounds like it, a darker version like... of Last Night. To the curb, guess you could say I got what I deserve. Cause I woke up on the wrong side of the truck bed. Wrong side of the truck bed this morning. Wait, that instrument, it kind of sounds like the Lil Wayne song Love Me. 
You know, you know that song? It cause my bitches love me. And it's like boom doo 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 with the background. Yeah, long as my bitches love me. My bitches love me. I have no comment. You guys have anything to add? Um, probably the worst song on the album, apart from Radio Song. Dog. It's 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 one of the catchiest by far, but is that really a good thing? Yeah. It's... If anything, its catchiness is its detriment. Yeah. Ugh. Song is uh. I to the oh my three. god. This first immediate riff reminds me of TX2. This song in particular, it reminds me of uh, Paper Cuts by MGK. Like, the rhythm is, like, exactly the same. I came home, buck in the back. She's on the porch with her bags packed. Kill me, but what's one less 30 all six to a redneck? Oh my god. Now this is machine gun hardy. Blink 3006. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, that was the worst song so far. Oh my god! Really? Yeah. Worse than Truck Man? Yes. Yeah. Worse than I mean, I, I, mean I'm a, I agree with you, but... <laughs> All right, I guess now it's just uh, it's us again. Um, yeah, I, I y'all bench break. <laughs> it's gonna be one of the most entertaining listens. That that is for sure. <laughs> that that much is definitely true. Yeah. Here's all I'm gonna say about that song. That song is about as disposable as his guns. All right. <laughs> I ain't in the country no more. Next flag. song. Oh my god, he's in the big city. He ain't a country boy no more. No. He has to do a crack addicts and homeless people, man. And sidewalks. And, <laughs> and sidewalks. <laughs> no dirt roads. Oh, he oh, actually does road. say, I've never seen so much concrete before. Gave a hundred man a dollar. He was begging, he was crying. Little later on, he was drinking on the 40 in a paper sack. He was begging, he gave him a dollar, and then you saw him drinking, and you're like, wow, I've never been deceived that hard in my life. <laughs> Jesus. How, how, much a, how much a dollar truly costs? I know. He was expecting <laughs> the gift to find God. In, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to pimp a mockingbird. <laughs> <laughs> What a shame. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, it's no. really a shame. <laughs> I also like how, as each song went on, there's like less and less to say about these songs. Like, there's. Yeah, it's just pure disappointment. And that's about it. So, yeah. Aww. I'll tell you one thing you're going to have the time of your life with this next song. I mean, yeah, I'll just say that last song was pain, melodramatic oh. pain, it's just so painful. This I next song, though, is everyone knows this, song. all right? So sing along, you guys, and chat. It's a classic. It's a, it's it's a, a banger. It's a chat, oh. chat classic. Music's so good, the stream got taken down. That's what I'm saying, all right? Hot man, you got to go to the world. It can't be too real. Gotta make it. Oh, I'm so 
Fuck! I'm gonna be real, I don't remember the second verse at all. The same. Oh, you're a good one. I can't. So bring that so money back! Wait, 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 Baby, what you think about getting out of here? Get you out of this bar, girl. Get to switching gears in my Chevy and the Yeti in the back with your baby. Yeah. 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 Uh, open those motherfucking lanes. You're goddamn right, okay? I'm feeling quite possibly one of the funniest songs of last year. In my opinion, this song is even better in the album because you get to listen to a bunch of radio songs and then, you know, finally he's like, this ain't no radio song, and you're like, huh. You know? It's great. Let's move on to this next song I'm excited about. It's called Kill Shit Till I Die. You can really hear the nickel back in here. <laughs> This shit ain't Nickelback, this is Bickleneck. <laughs> He's gonna shoot those bombs out of the sky, you know, with his, uh, his 9mm. One bullet. What? What? Yo, dude. There when, it is. when Walmarts are gone, the world is basically ending. Yeah, southern people... Southern people can't live without Walmarts. I I should know because I'm from the South. Kill shit till I die. 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 Kill shit this I this Kill this till I die. Kill shit till Kill shit shit I mean, this shit is just awful it's just awful dude doesn't it say something about him that he can outdo himself yeah it's impressive and apparently the next song is the lowest rated on the entire album that even like as if it could get worse like how i i don't know i mean yeah it's a zero for oh me. my god i didn't even do it ironically i just thought that was horrible oh my god <laughs> You like the? Do you like the trap instrumental that just kind of came and went? <laughs> yeah, before it transitions into Rage Against the Machine. Yeah, the redneck song, final song. What a flag. fucking high, high bar is set here at the end. I drink beer, eat deer that I kill. A bug zappers in my window sill, and I wouldn't have it. Yeah, this is the most hilariously pathetic way to end this album, and I think it's amazing how bad this is. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Life is the only life for me. Weezer at guitar solo. Wow. What a fantastic and celebratory ending to a fantastic album. <sighs> it's amazing, right? It's amazing. Uh, it's ending fantastic. Ten out of ten. I'm feeling. Ten I'm for the whole album. <laughs> I'm glad we <laughs> can concede. <laughs> ten out of ten. Let's go. We made it. All right. I'm gonna give my actual review here, and I uh, require silence for it. Okay. Now I feel like with the Mockingbird and the Crow, 
uh, essentially this album starts off in a way that I feel like is kind of cute and tongue in cheek and all of a sudden ends off in the most unlikable shit pile imaginable. I feel like by the end of it, a lot of the ironic qualities start to become egregious and I am being taunted and tortured by them. Um, this project really is horrible. That being said, I will give it 20 points to Gryffindor for being hardy because he deserves it. I'm feeling it too. There we go. You, you always gotta give. You always gotta give the 20 hardy points. Listen, I I'm not gonna act as if like I have any connection to country music as a genre because I really don't. I'm more of a folk guy myself, but this album is exemplary of the death of modern country it is everything wrong with the with the genre all distilled into an hour-long tight package with just some of the absolute worst writing and production of the genre honestly and especially considering like it's supposed to be like a concept double album as well it doesn't really delve into much of any of that the album just kind of sucks yeah all right angel what do you think of I, I think from front to back it is one of the most entertaining country albums i know it's not really like a high bar to clear considering when people like morgan wall put out 36 track albums something about the way this entire album's concept is like it, it, it really is incredibly fragile just one wrong like lyric one wrong song could knock this entire album's like concept and just completely annihilate it and that's exactly what happens over and over and over again you have a first half that's all supposedly quote like sell out country songs and then the second half is supposed it's supposed to be rock songs but there are songs on there that just have like trap influence that are still like primarily used in pop country and pop music and then you have truck, hard rock music, and then truck it's bed just, is literally truck bed is literally just synth pop. Like that's it's that's literally just that. Uh, I would thank you for sending this in, but this has truly been an egregious, long, and painful experience that I feel like has taken my already slowly draining sanity and basically uh, stabbed a hole in the truck bed fucking freezer, if you will, full of beers. All right, and all of a sudden, all the cold air that was remaining is now left the water that was in the cooler has drained and all that is left is warm beer and nobody wants warm beer all right you're welcome you're welcome <laughs> my album that i'd suggest to people um post-human survival horror i think it's one of my favorite metal projects to have come out that is, of course, by uh, Bring Me the Horizon. Um, I would personally love to shout out um, No Pressure by Logic. I think that's one of the best uh, hip-hop albums of the decade, genuinely. And it's an album that I've, that I've grown up with over the past four years, and I've really attached myself quite a lot to. And it's an album that I genuinely really adore. All right. I want to thank you guys again for both sending this in and being a, a part of this wonderful, hearty experience. Uh, so yeah, thank yep. you and uh, appreciate you. All right, I'm yeah. gonna sign you off now. All right, thank yeah. you for having us, man. This was, this was fun, man. I'm I'm really glad we could do this. Thank you. Oh, they're gone. Thank God. We can talk shit about them behind their back. Do you, can you believe that they actually said that Hardy was their favorite artist of all time? I heard it. They said it. All right, they said it themselves. All right. I, I heard it. They said, I love Hardy unironically. I'd love everything about this album unironically. And that's why they sent it in. You know, it's, it's a shame. It's a damn shame. Um, yeah, that's, I got nothing left to say about this album. I got nothing left in the tank. Seriously though. Thank you, Static. And thank you, Angel, for this chat. Please pay some respect for them providing for this hour long album. It was not cheap. It is very generous of them to do so. So uh, real talk. Yes, thank you. Let's take a break. That sounds like a great idea. I'm going to go take a break. I need a little bit of time to recover. Um, should We should get the good playlist. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, what if you didn't? You take it from the top?
There we go. Lady, you remind me of my raps on that Oh, like an arrow. Grab you by the... Hope it's not a problem, in fact. About the only thing I agree on with Donald is that...